to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Mm. May God grant us grace. There is what you can know that will make you a wonder. There is what you can know. Listen, all men are equal in Christ, but understanding has separated men into cadres, such that what is possible for one may not be possible for the other. This is the distinguishing feature. This is the mark of this ecclesia of God, the church. I'm going to come there, but I want us to understand that a mystery is anything that is kept secret or remains unexplained or unknown. Number two, a mystery is any truth that is unknowable except by divine revelation. A mystery is any truth that is unknown. That means it cannot be known with intellectualism. It cannot be found with just philosophies and people's ideologies. A mystery is a truth that is unknowable except by divine revelation. Ellie who began to speak in Job 32 and verse 8, he said, but there is a spirit in man. When all the elders came and began to, to debate among themselves in an attempt to explain the reason for the predicament of Job. I hope you understand that the meeting between the sons of God and Lucifer coming in the midst of them was a privileged information that was given by the writer to the readers. Those who were existing in that day did not know that such a meeting had happened so they were judging on the strength of their knowledge the bible says at the predicament of Job, all of the great men that represented different spheres of influence they came together and they were so shocked at the predicament of Job. the bible says they were silent for seven days reasoning among themselves stretching their intellectualism from end to end in an attempt to find what cause out of the archives of the knowledge they had known that was responsible for wealth and poverty they kept stretching their minds to see and understand what would have been responsible for this man's predicament and then elihu the youngest of them kept quiet and allowed them to keep articulating themselves and elihu said i wanted to speak but i was afraid because i was young and i thought that you people are old and so you will speak there are certain things that wisdom and age cannot teach. He said, but there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration, the breathing of that spirit upon men can grant unto them understanding. Hallelujah. So there are certain things you can know without experience. It's the illumination of the spirit. And we call that mysteries. This is my definition. Of a mystery number three this is what i call a mystery a mystery a mystery is or mysteries are spiritual codes c-o-d-e-s mysteries are spiritual codes that activate the operation of the laws and systems of god this is my definition of a mystery that a mystery is a spiritual code That activates the operation mm. and the systems of God and by extension activates the operations in the spirit realm mysteries are spiritual codes every king in ancient time every kingdom follow me please in ancient time 
became great on the strength of the mysteries that the kings had. Are you following me now? So mysteries are spiritual codes. When understood, they grant access to operating and activating certain laws in the spirit. When I started studying on this series, I was shocked to find out how many mysteries there are in the kingdom. Say after me, this kingdom is a kingdom of mysteries. Hallelujah. A kingdom of mysteries. The realm of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, the satanic kingdom thrives and prevails on the strength of mysteries. Are you following me now? That's why when we find somebody, there's a terminology we use, we call them secret societies. Not public societies. Is that true? Secret societies because you just see the manifestation of what they do. The, the dynamics of their operation is a mystery that is revealed only to a, 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 a what do I call it now? A brotherhood. A sect of certain people who have pledged their fraternity with that group. Or that cult and so you come and pledge your fraternity and to the extent to which the leaders are satisfied with your allegiance they open you up to certain mysteries and the mysteries determine your ranking are you getting my point now so that if you saw a man who was maybe a herbalist and all of that he's only a herbalist at that level on the strength of the mysteries that were revealed to him is that true when matters go bad he will go to in quote what he will call another higher person and the difference between two of them is the mystery that has been concealed in the nigerian army the ranking of the military is according to the secrets of the the mysteries the code of operation are you getting me that governs war and, and, and the art of military intelligence and all of that. So when they are about to promote another person, there is a special place where they train only people who attain certain ranks. And secrets are committed unto them. Are you getting me now? It is on the strength of this secret that they are given certain ranks. So that the limitation of the lower soldier does not affect the intelligence of the higher one. Everybody say mysteries. Your dominion in this kingdom lies on the strength of your understanding. Listen, I love Daniel. The Bible says in Babylon, they were selected. Is that true? A number of people were selected and Daniel was selected. They were selected to be taught mysteries. Mysteries as regards the Babylonian worship. Hallelujah. Daniel, Shadrach, Abednego, all of these boys... They were selected and they took them to a special school where they taught them the science of the babylonians where they taught them the oracles and the ordinances the covenants that made babylon strong and the bible says when they were tested daniel was found 10 times better but that's not the point daniel had an extra advantage they did not know so there was a time they saw a mystery look Daniel bombarded Babylon with all kinds of mysteries. Hidden truths. The secret that can make animals not to touch a man. It was not known to anybody. Daniel entered the lion's den and reproduced Eden in that lion's den. Hallelujah. When Belshazzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, they went and they brought all of, they made a feast to the God of gold and of silver. And all of that, it was the custom of kings that when they spoiled any nation, they would hold a feast to display their royalty and their strength. And in doing that, they will bring all of the spoils that they had gotten and celebrate and thank the God that kept his covenant with them. Hallelujah. And while they were taking of the cups that were made for the temple of the Lord, a handwriting everybody say a mystery a mystery was written it was a language that did not belong to the earth realm and all the sorcerers and the necromancers and the people who taught daniel 
they came with their advanced knowledge and they cracked all the codes and they could not find out and they said there is a man hmm. there is a man to this man has been given the understanding and daniel looked and they wanted to bless daniel with rewards daniel said keep your reward let me unlock this thing to you mene mene tekel ufesen oh king you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting this day your kingdom will be taken from you everybody say mysteries dominion on the strength of mysteries there is something you will know that will open your eyes to the patterns that are happening in your family and it no longer becomes a surprise when men are running you are the champion that will step in and say satan you can deceive others i know you you know i know you <laughs> hallelujah mysteries psalm 25 verse 14 psalm 25 verse 14 are you getting blessed tonight psalm 25 verse 14 please open your heart not just to listen but to receive i told you last week if you are not changed then we are wasting our time psalm 45 verse 14 the secret of the lord you can you can just read it is projected the secret of the lord everybody the secret of who so the lord has secrets is that true the secrets of the lord listen do you know let me give you a little background to shock you i want to digress a bit i'll still talk about it do you know the name satan and the name devil is not lucifer's name are you aware that devil is a generic name satan means the accuser is that true that's what it means the bible tells us in revelation that old serpent even satan the devil the accuser that's why the bible said they shall cast out devils s in my name they shall cast out devils the one we call satan his original name as given by god is lucifer and you know the meaning of lucifer the light bearer son of the morning are you seeing what made satan very intelligent satan was the light bearer he was the custodian of the revelations of the kingdom the light bearer so the one third of the angels that were given to him i hope you know the first person to be in eden was satan not adam satan had known eden oh yes together with the angels the ones we call ah, yeah. Help me. can we continue do you realize that angels let me shock you angels do not have wings i hope you know see angels are like humans they do not have wings it is the cherubims and the seraphs that have wings is it not in your bible did you ever in fact the bible puts it this way that when angels come be careful you can even confuse angels and people he said be good to others for in this some of you have entertained angels unaware are you getting my point now angels can eat human food abraham and his wife when the angels came did they not cook for them did they eat it the bible says that they ate the angels food manna from heaven is that true i'm not teaching you heresy all of this is in your bible praise the lord in fact let me show you something the bible says when the angel appeared to mary mary was not shocked at the angel it was the salutation the message that surprised her not the angel she looked at him and said oh god what kind of salutation is this in other words when the angel appeared to zechariah zechariah listen zechariah was not afraid in terms of the no when he doubted him he said i am gabriel let me tell you something that will interest you i hope you know i spoke a bit two weeks ago on forbidden knowledge remember our teaching of, for, of forbidden knowledge there are certain knowledge that god did not want this his ecclesia to know that was the knowledge adam did not know i hope you know lucifer was created is that true lucifer was created when lucifer was created 
his place of habitation was Eden. Follow me. Let me just clear this once and for all. The way some of you are looking at me, guy, I don't agree. Ezekiel 28. This is Bible studies. Ezekiel 28. Uh-uh. It was a prophetic word about the king of Tyre. That was Satan. As the earthly ruler. Satan was the earthly ruler before Adam. It was the judgment of Satan that led to the fall of Genesis 1 verse 2. And the earth was dark and void and formless. And the waters. You know why? Because I will show you that the earth was designed to be suspended on waters. The pillars of the earth passed down through the waters. God was speaking to Job. When Job summoned God, the Bible tells us, in Job 38, they began a conversation. And God said, hold on, Job. Where were you? Ah, okay, let's just finish this one. What was, I, what was I going to check? See, we are talking about something. I, I want to conserve time. You are the ones who are pushing me into this thing now. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 11, Son of man, take up a lamentation about the king of Tyre. Satan was the real king of Tyre. And say unto him, thou, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 13, if you are a Christian, read. One to read. Thou hast been where? Whose garden? Thou has been dear. Thou has been dear. He said, every precious stone, business people, precious stone, Satan knows where gold is. He knows where silver is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh yes, he knows. That's why he can enrich any man that fraternizes. Let me tell you something. Satan and demons have the advantage of experience. They have been here for a long time. Revelation calls him that old serpent. Thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, and so on and so forth, and gold. He said the workmanship, all right, of thy tablets and of thy parts was prepared in thee, in the day that you were there was a day he was created he was not created as satan he was created as <laughs> that means there was a story before genesis chapter one it was that story that was enshrined in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil i told you in eden you don't eat to feel hunger you eat to get understanding and impartation. Are you getting me now? The judgment of Lucifer after his rebellion was what led to Genesis 1 verse 2. And then what you see as Genesis 1 verse 3 was the recreation. And Elohim said, light, return as you were. And there was light. And then there was a creation again. Listen, I will show you that the creation in Genesis 1, there was another creation before then. Do you want me to show you? Follow me, Job 38. You will see that there was another, that was the, cre in fact, it was more detailed than Genesis 1. It was that creation that describes how the earth was made. And you will see how flawed science is. Follow me. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, Jehovah. We have touched the end of our hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of our. Are you there? Let's hurry up. We really have to save time. Job 38. The Lord is speaking to Job now in the height of his predicament. Are you there? Then the Lord answered Job, I'm going to be very fast, out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Guard up your loins. He was challenging Job. Please help me with a handkerchief. 
Guard up now thy loins like a man. For I will demand of thee and thou answer me. Where was thou? Listen. This is God challenging Job. Question one. Where was thou? Ah, if we are not following, let's hurry up. We have to save time. Verse four. Where was thou when I laid what? So the earth that science tells us is revolving in the air. God says, far, far, far. The earth has foundations. There was a time when I designed the foundations of the earth. And before that, I'm going to show you that the concept of the Son of God is not a New Testament concept. Thank you. Are you there? Verse 5. Or declare, if thou hast understanding. Verse 5. Who had laid the measures of it? This was specific architecture happening when the earth was being designed. Are you getting me now? Before the earth, I hope you know the earth was designed before man as we know, Adam was there. And before Adam was there, there were already other people. You will see them now. Are you ready? Verse 6. Whereupon are his foundations fastened? Or who had laid his cornerstones? Seven, please, if you are a Christian. One to go. When the morning star sang, thanksgiving, that the, when you lay foundation, don't you do thanksgiving? That was what the, the morning star sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. It's in your Bible that there was a time when the foundations of the earth were laid. No man was there. No devil of darkness. All the men, the kings of the earth. Are you now seeing the arrogance of Psalm 24? Many kings were standing to say, we know so much about the earth. And God said, come on now. Job, tell me, where were you? This is God challenging the man he created. There are some revelations that when you have, you will worship God in spirit and in truth. You see how much is an insult to now believe that the opposite of God is Lucifer. God was God. One day he thought of creating a light bearer called Lucifer. See, these are the secrets that when you know to cast out devils become easy. Because you know that you are not confronting an enemy of God like, like another strength. Uh -uh. When you see spirits manifesting, you tell them forget this. I have knowledge already. I've eaten of the tree of life. There is something that has given me knowledge. Listen. Some of this knowledge were part of the forbidden knowledge that the fallen angels began to tell the daughters of men and it tripped them and they started following the angels and they had intercourse and gave birth to giants. You think the daughters would just... If the angels were strange, wouldn't the daughters of men run away? Look, if there is an angel with one eye here and two wings and he says, sweetheart, I just decided for me. Will you come to him? Don't you know that angels are more handsome than men? There are no ugly angels. See, angels were not, they were not born. They were created a symbol of God's own artistry. Are you getting me? Listen. If you see Adam in heaven today, you will know the difference between Adam and every man who was born. Adam was not born. God molded him. No woman's womb caused imperfection in him. I have come to the end of my Take over. Now look up. This is another where I'm showing you the creation that happened before Genesis 1. Or who shut up the sea with doors. So God is saying the sea that we are seeing, there are doors in the spirit that shut it and create a boundary. That means every time you see flooding is an anomaly. A beast from hell is unlocking a door by operating certain principles and in the days to come the sons of light will have spiritual intelligence enough to challenge spirits across territories it was on the strength of this kind of knowledge that joshua looked at the sun he said i know your geography stand still 
and the son said yes sir i see your intelligence listen except you don't believe the prophecy that our generation is going to be great if you think it is a joke that the bible says it shall come to pass on that day that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted they will do certain things that will scare men and all nations will run to it we may not look like it but we are coming there is something god is doing in our lives this is why it is important to subscribe to the dealings of the spirit are you seeing why some people can become untouchable it's not that see there is the knowledge that you have there will no longer be fear what will make you afraid you have an ancient knowledge that that predates genesis 1 and on the strength of that before that time the holy ghost was still operating we're talking about mysteries let's just read to verse 14 when i made the cloud its garment and thick darkness a swaddling band for it and broke up for it my decreed place and set bars and doors look at the command god gave the seas verse 11 and said thus far shall thou come but no further and here shall thou proud waves be stayed are you getting me now the psalmist the man you call david these were some of the secrets that david had and david was a warrior he was see these people that were called sons of god were sons of god on the strength of the mysteries that they knew i told you the concept of son of god did not start in the new testament sons of god men who had power and authority as if they were not human beings they walked among us but they were absolutely unlimited abraham david when when jezebel was threatening people one man just showed up called elijah the tishbite no other information said who is this woman giving people headache elijah the tishbite taking fresh air on a mountain with proper understanding of spiritual laws and a band comes with all their ammunition elijah says look at these helpless people you let me tell you the knowledge of the mysteries of god can make you a wonder it was on the strength of this elijah taught elisha these things so elisha was sitting down and the and remember was it the assyrians now the philistines one of all those people they came and the servant was just he said come keep quiet you are only afraid oh lord I know that this man may not have that knowledge but can you open his eyes when he opened his eyes that man saw see see what elisha did for them he made them blind and they gave them food to eat they led them somewhere men who bastardized physical laws on the strength of what they knew samson was a man who had that strange understanding and showed us that a man can tap might from a realm beyond his normal body and he used the jawbone of an ass and destroyed people with it couldn't ten people rush him and then another person quack him then somebody put a spear quickly how did he kill them it was the same formula that david knew and he taught the mighty men in the cave of adulam and they came up with that formula one man killed 800 people that a sword that means he was not holding that sword physically no matter how you fight a sword cannot cleave to your hand what spiritual law did he use to hold the sword you have taken all the glory you have taken all the praise you have taken all dominion you have taken all the praise you have made them yours See, this is what eating of the tree of life does for you 
it reveals more of God. Are you seeing why the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the true spirit, the character, the operation of prophecy right now if we start worshiping on the strength of this knowledge many of you have seen the might of god and you see how much he can change your situation and you will laugh at certain things without being motivated you know that your god is able then some songs begin to make meaning this is what jesus taught the disciples and after a while they didn't even know whether they had faith or not he said you guys have been with me you go and try what i've taught you and this guy stepped into town and did mighty things no cathedral no ushers no publicity they saw devils crying up and down they said this is what jesus told us while they were discussing another devil was shouting and the bible says they returned rejoicing they said ah even the demons were subject to us they were not born again as we know because jesus had not died but a revelation empowered them it is that revelation that can make a handkerchief a man can hold a handkerchief and fall does a handkerchief have faith can a handkerchief speak can he prophesy can he talk it The apostolic work that God is doing in the church universal is going to scare the kingdom of darkness. Are you seeing why they are scared about your life? Because they do not yet know what you will become. But on the strength of the training you are going through, the devil is getting scared. That's why you will get persecution left, right and center. The devil will say, stop him. Stop him. In the days that come, the least among us will be as great as David. It's not an issue of emoji and one special man of God carrying an anointing and then a bunch of helpless people. Let me tell you, as we explore the things in the kingdom, you will find out the laws that can activate the gifts of the, of the spirit in a man. Are you getting me? If a herbalist can bend somebody down and wash his eyes and he will suddenly start seeing, what revelation did Elisha know that he told Naaman, go to a river, bath there, and be clean? There was a time that a man was sick, very sick, and Elisha just took some leaves and dropped it on his leg. What did these people know? Are you seeing why the Bible says the earth was not worthy of them? He said, this earth, no, this earth was not worthy of them. Philip was walking and suddenly this man left. I pray that God will grant us grace so that I will have the opportunity to teach on prophecy or the prophetic. And then I will show you certain things by the grace of God according to the limit of grace that has been given to me on how the prophetic work. Do you know why it's possible to see a thing before it starts? An adumbration of the prophetic is what is shown in our geography. We call it time zones. Everybody say time zone. How many of you know that some people have already seen tomorrow? Is that true? Now that is the, the spirit and the ability of prophecy. There are some people now that are already in tomorrow. Are you following me now? They can tell you how tomorrow looks like, but you are catching up. Are you getting me? What technology the scientists use to rewind and fast forward? Who gave them that concept? That you can rewind a video huh? to go back so that you watch something you like and you can fast forward it to jump something you don't like. Who taught them that principle? Look, let me tell you, don't fool yourself. Science does not rule the world. The realm of the spirit rules the world. Many scientists explored science with a level of passion that broke the boundaries of science and they entered into some realms. Please, let's go back to what we are talking about for heaven's sake. Mysteries. 
spiritual codes. Dominion in the kingdom only becomes a reality in a man's life to a degree that he understands and applies the mysteries of the kingdom. Please, I want to teach you something. Listen. By the way, let me take a minute and talk about the miracle service. Look up. The sincere truth is that there are many of you right here. You are not, you are not necessarily sick. You are not necessarily oppressed. The reason why you are coming here for many of you is to grow right now. Some keys have been given to you. Are you getting my point? Miracle service is like, is, is an evangelistic, if it's the same you that comes next week alone. Are you getting me now? There are no demons to cast out of you again. What you need is transformation and that's what is happening. So, miracle service is a time where God gives you an opportunity to extend the hand of mercy to many who otherwise would be buffeted by Satan. Are you getting my point? So, every last Friday is an opportunity for you to draw somebody who is about to die of a terminal disease or a family that has suffered all kinds of things. Don't just come for miracle service alone. There's, there's hardly much teaching that we do during miracle service. It's a time of ministration. For many of you, where you really get blessed is the time of prophecy and maybe impartation. Not necessarily healing and deliverance. So why don't you become that agent of change and go and fish men and say, look, you've got to be blessed. You don't know the Lord. You are not born again. Come. It's an opportunity for you to start putting to work that which the Lord is committing unto you. Hallelujah. God rules the heavens and the entire kingdom through mysteries. God has deep knowledge. He has secrets. The Bible reveals certain mysteries. I'm going to run through them. Get the tape. We may not have time to read the verses one by one. Mark chapter 4 verse 1 talks to us about the mystery of the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 talks to us about the mystery of resurrection. He said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, but we shall be changed. So we see Paul, I show you a mystery, a mystery, a mystery. Ephesians 1 verse 9, Paul speaking about the mystery of God's will. That was committed unto him. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 3. Colossians 1. 25 to 27. Talks about the mystery of Christ. So Christ. Understanding Christ. Cannot be through head knowledge. It's a mystery. It is through the illumination of the spirit. That you will understand. Please are you following me? Ephesians 5 verse 32. Talks about the mystery of marriage. About a man and a woman hello you don't you don't understand marriage because you are old marriage is a mystery that takes the spirit paul began to talk to us and he said this is a mystery and in it i talk about christ and the church ephesians 6 verse 19 talks about the mystery of the gospel this gospel that we preach is a mystery second thessalonians 2 verse 7 talks about the mystery of iniquity and i'll touch a bit on this when i start talking on the ecclesia the mystery of iniquity a secret code that satan uses it is the mystery of iniquity that can bring what we call transgenerational causes is the mystery of iniquity that can bring what is called spells and pronouncements upon people iniquity iniquity is not sin to sin means to err, to default. First Timothy 3 verse 9 talks about the mystery of faith. Holding forth the mystery of faith with a pure conscience. It talks about the mystery of faith. This faith, faith, faith that people talk about is a mystery. That's why many people talk about faith and have no results because they teach faith from a scientific perspective. But when you are given illumination, this faith is a mystery. 
1 Timothy 3 verse 16 talks about the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness. This was the mystery that John Lake understood. That God can come and become a man. And something happened in John Lake's life. No sickness could touch that man. He made Spokane one of the healthiest cities in the entire world during his time. Revelations 1 verse 20 talks about the mystery of the seven stars. These were mysteries that were given John in the Isle of Patmos when he was caught up to the third heavens. The mystery of the seven stars. Revelation 17 verse 5 calls Babylon a mystery. Ah, what is Babylon? Babylon is the prophetic representation of the satanic kingdom and its operation adumbrated in a city called babylon the physical babylon was a reflection of the spiritual babylon just like the tabernacle was a reflection of the tabernacle in the heavens are you getting my point now so a physical manifestation of babylon and the bible says babylon itself that system is a mystery Revelation 17 verse 17 and I will show you the mystery of the woman. A woman is a mystery. Brothers, stop blaming yourself. A woman is a it takes revelation. What did I say? It takes do you know why a woman is a mystery? Because there are many aspects of a woman that it takes light for you to know let me give you two number one a woman is a gate in the spirit why is she a gate the only gate that can birth another life you think god just put womb in a woman why didn't they put womb in an animal just get pregnant and drop the seed in the animal no a woman is a gate in the spirit you will now see the reason why if you pray deliverance for 10 people about eight of them will be ladies there is a reason why satan loves ladies it's not for sex are you getting what i'm saying let the devil anoint one man and he can conquer 10 men let satan anoint one woman she doesn't need to conquer men she will go to the king that rules those people jezebel are you seeing that now a representation of the men Elijah conquered 100 people. Jezebel made the prophets of God to go and hide. One woman. You see why she's a mystery? When a woman says she's going to deal with you, start fasting. Keep calling them weaker vessels. That if a woman tells you, you will see. Run fast. Run. We talk very little about wizards. But we talk so much about witches. First Corinthians 4 verse 1. Let's, let's finish up. The mysteries of God. God himself is a mystery. That's why all this Scientology and these junks that attempt to explain God from a three-dimensional plane. Forget about all those things. God himself is a mystery. Tongues are a mystery. First Corinthians 14 verse 2. We speak mysteries. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 about the hidden mysteries, the wisdom of God shrouded in a mystery that the princes of this world did not know. Hallelujah. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes dominion the true revelation of dominion pray say lord open my eyes there is something i need to know there is something i need to see there is a realm of power i need to step in pray for the sake of your family pray for the sake of our nation pray for the sake of your children 
open me up to the hidden truths of the spirit cause my eyes to see let the veil be taken off my eyes oh god that i will walk in power for real not as a man of god but as an ambassador of the kingdom give me explanation to the happenings around my life let me understand the system that keep tossing my life to and fro show me the codes oh god open my eyes and let me see uncover puzzles in my life I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. I will sing I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will forever sing your praise. Listen. When you catch the revelations i'm sharing with you you can look at a man and alter the course of the devil in his destiny with the power of the word that word will live on the strength of the mysteries you have and no power in existence you see what makes the spoken word powerful it's not just about speaking a lot of people keep speaking he said upon this rock there must be a rock that you build on that where you speak it will come to pass that rock is the comprehension of this hidden truth that was why he told john he says seal it up this is for an appointed time close it he said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the seals and the elder tapped me and said do not weep the book can be opened when you catch these mysteries you can walk to a sick body and while you look at that person there are so many revelations that will stream from you that without touching the person he gets healed at once because your revelations exert a force in the spirit are you getting me now demons celebrate on the strength of believers they know we are ignorant of the mysteries of the kingdom so that even when we are praying we are praying out of ignorance and our prayers much effort but it generates very little results and we come back sweating and we believe that on the strength of our sweating it should happen Je listen jesus the custodian of the mysteries when he came the demon said ah you have come to destroy us you know every law it takes to check us out so we beg you when will it happen in your life when you will walk into your house and people will start calling you and say please i want to see you and you say you know i'm i'm a witch right i'm going to pack out peacefully i've been oppressing your people and like jesus you will say go out never to return what many prophets have come to swindle your parents 
of all their money you step in as an ambassador and every time they say something is writing like a doctor while they are talking god is talking to you and you look between the lines and you tell them i have come to stay evil this is not about man of god you look at a woman who is buried and you understand the mystery of creation not just the mystery of healing not just the mystery of creative miracles the mystery of creation and the woman says i have a damaged fibroid all of a sudden many scriptures start firing in your head how elijah bathed and god healed how many things happen and on the strength of that revelation you say it is possible madam you will go back and come with your child i remember somebody who walked to adeboe they were i mean um, um abioye david abioye bishop david abioye and he was going to his office and the husband and wife they came and they said daddy we have been you know we've been trusting god no child and adeboe turned and looked at the man he said mr man you better get this woman pregnant before the next time and that's how he left them that was the end of it there was a revelation male and female he created them a woman is not a man are you getting me now hmm. that's the revelation that can enter you and you can get to the place of prayer and say lord if he created them male and female where is the male version of my life i'm tired of singleness male and female that alone is a revelation see talk does not make the realm of the spirit scared talk does not drive demons there is a light there is a light that you carry to the realm of the spirit and it is that light that brings power and through the greatness of that power every enemy will soar hallelujah ecclesia everybody right the ecclesia the church is one mystery this is really the topic for tonight the ecclesia e k k l e s i a e double k l e s i a let us understand the ecclesia tonight very briefly before we pray Matthew 16 from verse 18 and 19 the Ecclesia Matthew 16 can you project it for us please and amplify it now look up please let me give a little background can I have two or three people just any two or three people just stand here I want to show you something. Who is the last person? Anybody? Thank you. Look up. In ancient times, I told you that kings reigned through mysteries, right? There were certain people in every kingdom called knights. K-N-I-G-H-T. Everybody write that word down. Knights. Grant us revelation, oh God. These men called knights, look at me. They were a special selection. They were not military men alone. They were what we call the highest level of the intelligence of that kingdom. Are you getting me? They went through special training from martial art to astrology. Are you following me now? to science to all biology they were learned in every area now these knights were the custodians of the secrets and the mysteries of that kingdom hallelujah it was given to those knights how many of you i said it last week how many of you have watched these kinds of films where they go and hide treasures under a rock somewhere in a kingdom all right and there may be a magic word until you can pronounce the magic word then the door will open only the knights had knowledge of this hallelujah if the kingdom were about to be destroyed they know where to escape with the king and other people they had secret entrances in and out of the kingdom these knights 
were the ones that we call apostolos titus 1 verse 1 that's where we get the word apostle they were a special people set apart and sent as envoys of the king so if for instance they came to capture maybe the queen or any noble man in the land even when they destroy all the military people are you getting me they can send just three knights three knights alone can go and subdue a whole kingdom and bring back the queen and then the king will crown them some of you read about obama doing it to the military right they crown them they increase them in ranking hallelujah this concept of knighthood and let me call it apostleship and 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 uh, ambassadorship this is the platform on which we'll be able to understand the ecclesia god bless you sirs. the word church please listen the word church is not a religious terminology at all are you getting me the word church has nothing to do with religion the word church is a governmental terminology ecclesia it's a governmental language it's a political language that word ecclesia what does it mean it means the called out ones the separated ones the trained ones the commissioned ones ecclesia it's not about a building at all it's not about a pastor and a congregation no ecclesia is a governmental language it's a language that is used to describe envoys men who were trained with military intelligence with all kinds of intelligence sophisticated men men of dexterity and intelligence they were sent by the king The first use of that word was by Jesus himself in Matthew 16 from verse 18 and 19. We need to understand what the church really is. Hallelujah. Then we can compare what we know today to be church as against the pattern of God. Because you see, the structure of the kingdom is such that it must be done in the earth as it is in the heavens that means we must reproduce the pattern of things and one of the manifestations of the spirit of elijah is to set in order you bring order you restore the patterns of the tabernacle of david matthew 16 verse 18 let's hurry up wherever we can stop we must not necessarily finish Matthew 16 verse 18 and I say unto thee Jesus speaking thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my whose church I will build my he said and the of shall prevail the same word that was used for Jacob and, the, and God. Huh? Prevail. Prevail a contention. So the first description of church gives it a military description. Are you following me now? The moment church is mentioned, the next word is gate of not nice chairs and pews. The church, the gates of hell. The church, the gates of hell. What is the church? The church is God's system. The church is God's strategy for enforcing the kingdom. The church is God's system for restoring back his original pattern. The church is God's system, is God's strategy, is the name of the mystery that God will use to restore all things. It's called the church, the ecclesia. Are you following me now? The church is a mystery. 
That's why many people go to Bible schools, theological schools, and we do not understand church. We study homiletics, we study everything we can study. But then we may never understand it except the Spirit of God opens our eyes. Listen, the concept of church had always been in God's mind right from the Garden of Eden. It didn't just come in the New Testament. Are you getting me? God's idea was for Adam and Eve to give birth to their first child in the garden. Are you getting me? So that the child can see how the garden looks like and the lifestyle, the kingdom lifestyle in the garden. And then they begin to reproduce that pattern across the entire earth. Satan knew it. That's why he attempted to thwart the plan. So the first child was born outside Eden. So he never had an understanding of how the life of Eden would be. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. From that time, God desired a people whom he would call and bring to himself. He wanted a people that he would consecrate and give his values, his agenda, his vision. God's idea has never changed. God's agenda has not changed. Time has changed. Technology has changed. But God's vision, God's universal agenda is still in force. Exodus 19 from verse 1 and 6. When you read that, you begin to see the pattern. For time's sake, we may not read. God began to communicate his desire to separate a people that he would be their God and they would be his people. His people who were consecrated unto him. And then God found a man called Abraham. The first manifestation of the ecclesia after Noah. Hallelujah. You see the reason why God called Noah. Are you getting me? His three sons, their three wives, separated them and destroyed the earth. A corruption happened again. It had always been the contention between the agenda of God and the manifestation of the gates of hell. Now Abraham came, an idol worshiper, and he said, Abraham, come out of thy father's house. I call you out. Be a called out person. Be separate. And if you do that, then I will bless you. Then I will do all of this and that. Genesis 12 verse 1 and 2. And then God called the man called Moses. And it was Moses that took the people from Egypt out through the Red Sea. And God gave them laws and ordinances. Now please listen. I'm going to say some things that will disturb you this night laws and ordinances were what separated the people of God from other nations are you getting me they had laws and they had ordinances that was what created a distinguishing feature between the nation of Israel and other hedonistic nation for instance they had a law that they should not eat blood so if other nations were eating blood the nation of Israel did not eat blood and so that marks them out to be a separate people the laws and ordinances that were given through Moses to the nation of Israel marks them out as a separate people another thing is that God's people had a culture write it culture is the way of life of a people look we must understand this otherwise we we'll who keep playing games in the church the kingdom has a culture but what we teach in church now is coming to the kingdom with any culture you want as long as you name the name of Christ that's trash from the pit of hell the kingdom has a culture its own culture hallelujah when you travel to the Yoruba land, they have a culture. And if you intend staying there long enough, 
you had better start learning the culture when you go to Igbo land they have a culture a way of life when you come to the north they have a culture when you come to the middle belt or down northeast they have a culture every territory has a culture say after me the kingdom has a culture we cannot allow lawlessness to just happen in the body of Christ there are all kinds of lawless things that happen in the body of Christ and we believe there is nothing wrong with it when you understand kingdom you will know that the kingdom of God has a culture hallelujah from Matthew 16 verse 18 to 19 we see three things about the ecclesia number one that scripture reveals to us that God had an agenda that's number one he had an agenda that attempted to be thwarted by Satan from Adam but that his agenda is still in force and would be fulfilled that's the first thing that scripture reveals to us everybody say God has an agenda yes Satan has tried through the ages to thwart the agenda of God but I'm telling you that the gates of hell will not prevail the agenda of God will still come to pass what is the agenda of God a restoration of the values the ordinances of the kingdom hallelujah number two it reveals to us that the biggest opposition to this agenda are the gates of hell don't mistake in it the biggest agenda to this advancement is not the terrorists it's not the godless people it's not the unbelievers but the gates of hell that means everything you see around that physically attempts to limit the advancement of the kingdom was birthed and sponsored by the gates of hell the greatest opposition to God's agenda is the gates of hell what what are the gates of hell I need to explain this the gates of hell describes Lucifer and all his strategies and the devices deployed to frustrate God's agenda the gates of hell attempts to describe Lucifer and all the strategies and devices that he deploys to frustrate God's agenda second Corinthians 2 from verse 10 to 11 tells us that we should not be ignorant of the devil's stratomai his devices his mysteries his agenda do not be ignorant Satan has a pattern Satan has a blueprint part of his blueprint is how he will destroy your life part of his blueprint is how he will ruin Nigeria part of his blueprint is how he will take over the seven mountains and the spheres of influence part of his blueprint is how he will mislead and deceive pastors to derail from the patterns and the ordinances of God so that the enemy can come and sow tears among the wheat part of his ordinances and his strategy is to defile the sacrament of marriage he has a strategy and if the church is ignorant we are in trouble number three it reveals to us that the system and the agency through which this global invasion this restoration of God's pattern would occur is called the church the church is God's system is the mystery he revealed to advance and fulfill his agenda brothers and sisters the church is first and foremost not about a Sunday Monday Wednesday Friday gathering of people no the church is not just about buildings the first revelation about the church is that the church is a strategy the church is a system through which God's agenda will be restored back to the earth the 
ecclesia first talks of a species of people write it down the ecclesia talks of a species of people reformers revivalists and ambassadors so the first revelation of ecclesia is that it talks of a special breed of people a species of people a kind of people called out set apart a breed of reformers revivalists ambassadors not pastors not just prophets not just apostles ambassadors everybody say ambassadors that's the word we must focus on we are focusing too much on pastor and apostle and prophet no the word is ambassador the envoys that will carry this ideology to the systems then number two it talks of the institution that trains builds and equips these ambassadors the ecclesia of god is also the institution that he put in place just like a terrorist camp just like a, a platform that was built just like a diplomatic training center are you getting my point now to train to build and to equip these ambassadors and these envoys to train men and women that will make a difference by becoming the difference not just make a difference by talking about it not just make a difference by designing posters and wearing shirts jesus is lord what good is wearing a shirt jesus is lord when your life is not a living epistle and there are ministries that put all kinds of pressure on people you must buy this and buy that to show you an ambassador i'm not against that but i'm telling you the highest symbol of an ambassador is not his attire is that you become a written epistle i can carry a shirt written jesus freak and still be a thief i can use that shirt to be sleeping with a lady and on it is written jesus freak i'm not against marketing the ideologies of the kingdom but i'm telling you beyond all these external religiosities is that we must become the written epistles say amen so the true concept of church starts with the hearts and the lives of men are you getting me not looking for land to build not looking for a cathedral to expand when we talk about the institutional aspect of the church we talk about that but the average pastor when he wants a church the first thing he's thinking about is where can i get land let me build my church in four months and make a name very very wrong concept of the church hallelujah the final thing i'll talk about before we pray is the process of becoming the ecclesia never let anybody fool you that being born again makes you the church i'm going to show you right now if the church listen the bible says those he predestinated he called that's one level those he called he justified another level those he justified he glorified there are processes in the kingdom mm. what is the process of becoming the ecclesia that ambassador and then how is the church as an institution supposed to function according to god's new testament pattern not according to a denomination not according to a sect not according to african tradition according to the patterns and the ordinances of the kingdom when the church functions as it's supposed to function no power in existence will be able to stand against it because the bible says i will build my church and the bible says we all like living stones 
been built into a spiritual house so that church we are the blocks that god will use and we become a formidable defense and the bible says if we do it right the gates of hell shall not prevail you know why the church is being trampled i will show you the revelation the bible says if the salt has lost its savour, it is good for nothing but it will be trampled by men not demons you see why men are trampling the church they act nigerian films and mock pastors they act all kinds of things and discredit people he said if the church loses its several he gave us a sign he said when you see men trampling the church they are losing its several number one the process of becoming the ecclesia number one is your entrance into the kingdom this is what we call new birth please write it let's hurry up with these steps and then we'll pray I want to close early today because of the bike issues entrance into the kingdom new birth romans 8 from verse 8 to 10 and verse 13 the bible gives us the condition for being saved it says let me just turn here quickly let's save time Romans 10 verse 9 if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and then verse 13 says for whoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved that's the first step brothers and sisters not the only step to becoming the ecclesia those set apart ones the ones that first peter chapter 2 talks about we'll go there before we round up number two is the putting off of the old man the second step to becoming the ecclesia the putting off of the old man another name for it is repentance through deliverance right i will explain it to you many people do not know what deliverance is and i know that there have been the concept of deliverance has been abused many people just think deliverance is about people rolling up and down and coughing out things and vomiting all kinds of things no that's not necessarily the entire scope of deliverance deliverance means to be separated from something are you getting my point you must put off the old man if you truly want to walk as the ecclesia please don't let anybody confuse you it is part of the necessary and sufficient condition to be the ecclesia the light of the world ephesians 4 verse 22 please help us media if we can rush it repentance deliverance these things must happen to you it is called the putting off of the old man by deliverance i don't mean hands are laid on you and then you roll and fall on the floor no i i told you what repentance was aaron can i use you again it was with you i used you last week watch this an ideology a culture a mindset all right is making aaron to move a to take a particular course in life is that true when the word of god comes right the mystery of the gospel when well taught and understood should make the guy turn are you getting me this turning not the walking the turning is what we call repentance are you getting me the walking is not necessarily repentance i will tell you the name the turning away your willingness to turn from your traditional way of thinking from your denominational way of thinking 
from your cultural way of thinking by the power of God's word is called repentance and it is deliverance because there are forces strongholds that make men to act and behave that way and when that separation comes you are put off the old man the bible says that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to what deceitful lust lust there does not just talk about immorality it means that there is a craving please are you getting my point now this is the foundation of what we know to be the holiness movement which is not wrong but i will show you the imbalance and the imperfection of the holiness movement if you put off a loan listen if you put off a loan it's still not enough how many of you know that there are many people in church who are not sleeping around they are not drinking but the lusts and the urge is practically killing them yes or no pastors reverends bishop so i don't i will not come and fornicate or do something with this lady because i am aware that god hates it is that true but in my mind there's all kinds of torture i don't want to steal I don't want to do malpractice just because there are people if that loss is still there you are not delivered are you seeing the limitation of the holiness movement so they teach ordinances don't do this don't do that which is good but if you do not put on that's the next thing put on there is an ideology there is a mindset that became a stronghold that drove you into that way of life if you just turn mechanically without being free from the mindset from that which causes you you will stand although you may not commit the act of sin that's what leads a lot of people into things like pornography and masturbation because we men of god are lords over people supervising who slept with who and who so because of that fear they say ah let no lady come to my house so they can lock the door and download pornography to the demon is still there if you put off you must put on that's when true liberty occurs the process of becoming the true ecclesia number three the putting on of the new man we call that renewal and transformation so new birth repentance and deliverance the next step is renewal and transformation Paul was speaking to people who were already born again they were already born again a congregation of believers and he says do not conform to the thinking pattern of this age but be ye transformed can you see transformation and renewal used be ye transformed by the renewing so it is transformation that now pushes Aaron experientially are you getting me now out of this realm so that it no longer is not just that the Bible said it but it has become his way of life but a lot of people sing religiously the things I used to do I do them no more but you are still thinking about it you are still imagining it to an extent that people have started preaching messages and said there's no man there's no man anywhere who does not at any time imagine himself sleeping with a woman forget it we're all human beings people have coined messages to explain their refusal to put on they have put off but they are being frustrated so you are seeing the church money something is pinching you can't i use this church money and build a bungalow and you know that if you touch god's money you know it will bring a curse on you so the fear of that curse is keeping you but you are dying slowly every time you see the finance department counting the money you are almost dying you are not yet free you are saved 
but you are not free he said where the spirit of the lord is there is not only salvation there is liberty many people in the church are saved but i'm telling you they are not free you know what i'm saying is painful but it's true but god wants you to be free he wants you to be free hallelujah Aaron, god bless you and then listen point number two and three is what produces perfect holiness please write it down putting off a load is not enough to know that holiness is a nature that the holy ghost the spirit of holiness comes upon you he comes upon you to open you up to the possibilities of walking experiential in holiness it is the grace for holiness he grants unto you that makes you to be able to walk please understand this i know that there's a general concept of holiness in the body of christ that holiness is not what you do holiness is just what you receive please be careful there is a very serious balance holiness is the work you you walk on to it on account of the grace that came by the spirit of holiness not mechanically not traditionally please get this there's a lot of perversion in the body of christ i'm aware that there are men of god who sleep around with their congregations and have secured them with revelations that once you are born again the bible says this and that and that will have been engraved in his palm the only thing that takes people to hell is this and that and that and so many people move i hope you know that one of the mysteries of iniquity is the mysteries of lawlessness please do not be deceived i want you to be a powerful church this is not the way our fathers walked and if we walk this way we are suffering right now because our parents in ministry they walk the path of true holiness but when they got prosperity and they arrived there they changed the message and they gave us the younger generation and we are we are suffering the fathers have eaten sour grapes and our generation now have become powerless because we are absorbing doctrines that may not be wrong but they are not balanced hallelujah the putting off of the old man through the spirit of god and the putting on of the new man renewed in righteousness is the complete concept of biblical holiness point number four the process of becoming the ecclesia number one entrance into the kingdom new birth two repentance through deliverance three renewal and transformation number four is equipping and training the saints to establish and advance the kingdom are you seeing the process now the fourth step is now the equipping and the training this is where you now talk about the institution church the assembly of believers this is the core function of the assembly of believers now listen this equipping and this training of these prospective ambassadors to advance the kingdom is what the bible calls discipleship write it down are you seeing that many things we have taught as discipleship is just familiarizing people with the ordinances of that denomination for the purpose of being baptized and receiving positions in the church he may not be wrong in himself in itself but it's not the perfect ordinance of god discipleship is not about just coming somewhere and sitting down and indoctrinating people with concepts and theological ideas no discipleship is the ministry of the fivefold to the body equipping them what is happening right now is what discipleship is are you getting my point now 
unveiling to you the patterns and the concepts the ordinances and the mysteries of the kingdom that means the real goal of the church is not to keep members there forever in its ideal form a growing church is not necessarily a church with the largest crowd a growing church is the church that has been able to effectively disciple people and release them to begin to advance the kingdom are you seeing our concept right now there's nothing wrong with crowd don't get me wrong but i'm saying that there is a little twisting and is getting into error men of god believe that you are a great man of god and the kingdom is being advanced if there are people here and there is an overflow outside and there are other people then we say the kingdom is advancing it is advancing if the people are being taught with the intent that they will begin to manifest as ambassadors that means a church if you are here in koinonia for one year two years and you cannot find your place in destiny and begin to take the influence of the kingdom we have failed as leaders and we are cheating you are you getting my point it doesn't matter if koinonia starts growing it doesn't matter if joshua selman is becoming a famous man that's not god's parameter for measuring the success of the church please are you understanding me because some of you are under a lot of ministries and with time god is calling you some of you are already in ministry right now get the record straight so that you don't get up in error under pressure if you are truly advancing the kingdom god will send people to you the bible says and god increased to their number daily as those who should be saved it's god that brings increase paul can plant apollo can water but true increase comes from god the institution of the local assembly the institution of platforms like koinonia and different churches scattered across the globe if they function properly should be a powerful force in training people question as we attempt to round up let me ask you a question why is it that there are millions of churches maybe or hundreds of thousands in nigeria but the transformation as far as taking the ideology of the kingdom is very little why is that so could it be that there is a violation of god's pattern of church are you getting my point now in every city there are ministries ministries like redeemed who have gotten unusual grace to push beyond boundaries push beyond territories even where a church cannot be planted you find their churches there the power of the holy spirit at work in them and many other ministries but the question is there is a difference between the growth of a ministry and the advancement of the agenda of the kingdom koinonia can open branches all over and everybody can rejoice and we will celebrate only if that ecclesia that institution is training and building people the job of the man of god is not just to sit down in front and have water and have ushers and have an office with ac wonderful let his life be comfortable for as long as that ecclesia remains a true apostolic and prophetic platform please hear me your fellowship is an ecclesia your home cell is an ecclesia it doesn't just mean a church with a name like living faith redeem or, or all of the great ministries we have the bible says where two or three are gathered in my name i am there in their midst wherever there is a training an equipping a building of people where you are supplied the tools for advancing the kingdom what are the tools influence excellence the anointing prosperity 
character the message of the kingdom are you now seeing the context in which all these teachings come so if i teach you on prosperity if i just teach you so that you become a multi-millionaire and then sing a song and flaunt your cars and say god has been good to me as good as that is you are not an effective ambassador are you getting me now so i can be comfortable to teach prosperity on the strength of the fact that you are aware that i'm teaching it as a tool for kingdom advancement i can teach character knowing that you are aware that it is a tool for kingdom advancement are you getting my point now every other teaching is a means to an end equipping you to take over to bring the influence of the kingdom and then the final stage of becoming the ecclesia is what i call the execution write it the execution where you have now been equipped the equipping is ongoing but that you should be able to be equipped enough that you can start working while you are still learning i call it the execution what is the execution fulfilling the go ye command that means you have been equipped jesus walked with the people even when paul was coming to the end of his ministry paul kept saying that i may know him but it not it did not stop paul from planting churches and building things so that you are still learning is not an excuse if you are really growing a time should come you should join part of the go ye team to now start saying all right we have been equipped it's time to begin to go and the bible says go ye into where cosmos everybody write cosmos i've taught it conquering cosmos i won't go into there again what is the execution taking the message the influence please write i hope you're writing this same thing on facebook please and all the social media let them understand what i'm saying the execution means fulfilling the go ye command it means taking the message the influence and the power of the kingdom to all the mountains and the spheres of human existence obeying the go ye command that you have now been trained can i have four people all of you here just come from mama please come hallelujah now watch this step one they have come indicating their interest to serve god praise god just turn towards me guys step two is that they undergo a process of the putting off through the word of god everything happens by the word are you getting me now delivered from all their ideologies witchcraft all every kind of thing step three they put on the new man by the power and the spirit of god and then the equipping continues and then a time comes god begins to send them you go into politics and governance you go into arts and entertainment you become a pastor go into the mountain of religion you let me have three more people one two three four there are seven mountains you go into the media mama you like money business go into business stand here how are you now three people you go into the education go and become a professor you ah this is the guy that would have gone into finance oh. go into the family life be a good husband teach people one two. are you seeing that now this is what we call goyi goyi is not just carry tract and talking and come and harass a brother with, with and say my brother time is up you are going to hell i'm not saying that is wrong but i'm saying if that is our concept of kingdom advancement we are joking a guy is quietly maybe trying to ask this lady out he has been maneuvering this thing for weeks and now it's the moment to let it out 
and it may not be demonic maybe it's a christian brother you just come in you are talking for 20 minutes they don't know your name you just keep harassing the people and say do you know that hell is real blah 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 the way you are doing for the wages of sin is dead you never ask the person whether he's born again you never ask where well, by god's grace i will teach us on evangelism how do you really evangelize the person does not know your name you just assume is a brother who wants to destroy that sister's life maybe it's even her pastor counseling her because the person may be wearing jeans and a t-shirt doesn't necessarily mean the person is a sinner now you waste time 30 minutes teaching and they keep quiet at the end of it they say brother we appreciate we are born again i say oh that's lovely you have you have wasted the time of the kingdom you would have politely introduced yourself and then you know that you are brethren in this work and then you can move on to make your job more effective but it's not your fault it's what you were taught and what you were told to do so you obey to the latter and that's why god is helping us please don't get me wrong tract evangelism and one-to-one -one evangelism are effective and they will remain effective forever are you getting my point now but that we need to balance it up the church is not about pastors all of you come come and stand here come and crowd me here and try to push me let me show you the nonsense that is going on in the body of christ because we've taught them if you want to advance the kingdom be a pastor are you seeing it now so aaron has been trained his potential is boiling he doesn't know what to do you've not taught him on purpose mama wants business or you make him church treasurer now you didn't make are you getting my point now so there is a lot of fight on the pulpit and then aaron gets angry and aaron breaks out and goes to france to go and start his church not that's not wrong i'm not saying everybody leaving a church is necessarily of the devil there are people god really spoke to are you getting my point but there are many people on the pulpit that have no business with pulpit are you hearing what i'm saying i've told Pro aaron is an apostle i've told this guy you're a prophet i've said you're an evangelist i've said you're a, you're a prayer warrior i've said you are you are what you're a pastor i've said you're a bible study teacher a businessman you see it, it changes quickly he really likes business for whatever reason praise god this is what we have taught people so every young man in church envisages the ladies their passion is to see who is the pastor and when one brother who is not a pastor just comes and says sister good afternoon she says, mm -mm, don't even start i know where you are going don't waste your time i'm going to marry a pastor because what you have been told is that except you stand behind this pulpit you are not advancing the kingdom and the lady in her innocence say ah if that's the way to advance the kingdom let me be a help meet to whoever has shown seriousness to advance this kingdom so the other brothers are considered to be unserious people in the church no matter how effective they are and it puts pressure on them people start coming up with false visions people start creating their little bible studies because they want to respond to their concept of kingdom advancement but a true apostolic church builds people and lets them know that the businessman is as effective as the pastor are you getting my point now that the person who goes into fashion designing is also an apostle in his own respect so i salute him although he may be a member of my church but i never degrade him although i trained him i salute him and i tell him go with this fashion let ladies stop exposing their breasts left like and center because they think it's fashion get that junk out of the fashion world receive illumination from the spirit are you getting my point take the fashion mountain so you will receive the same impartation as if you are a pastor but is to send you to that mountain and you will go with confidence it as a fashion designer the prophetic is working in your life you are receiving blueprints of designs and the businessman is making money for you are you getting my point now the other person is marketing what you have said in the media when that happens the gates of hell shall not prevail are you getting me because in the government there is an ambassador on our reality tv show 
will not be showing people who can listen to the language of grass. Rather, it's not that you must say Jesus in your television program. Let me tell you something. There is a light and a power. There is an effulgence that your programs are directed after the order of the pattern of the kingdom. It does not mean you come up and say, look, everybody, you are an unbeliever, but you teach about character. When you start with family values that are consistent with the principles of the kingdom, you now begin to enter cosmos. The sons of the kingdom are not wise. That's the reason why we are not moving forward. So before your program, you are praying in tongues for one hour and you talk to the prayer warrior and he's praying. Although you have a secular, in quote, a secular TV station, maybe a new station, but you have prayer warriors at the back. Just like all the rich men have the people that enchant for them. So the prayer warriors are praying. That's their ministry. They are prayer warriors. They are counselors and they are paid to do it. Hello? Did you hear what I'm saying? I see a lot of religion paid to pray, of course. This man is married. What do you want him to go and tell his wife? After praying from morning till night, for you to advance your kingdom. You did business and they paid you. You preached and they gave you honorarium. I'm not saying go and start telling people, you better drop money, I've learned my lesson. If you ever come to me for counseling without money, uh-uh. Please go back to your seat. The ecclesia is the light of the world. The ecclesia is the hope of our generation. The ecclesia is this mystery man that God is raising. Are you getting me? A man is not just a human being. A man can be a system. That was what the king saw in his dream. He saw a man standing the head of gold, the feet of clay. That man was a description of many dispensations. So this man called the church, the body with Christ being the head of this man called the ecclesia. Together they have become an unbeatable team. This is what we call koinonia, the spirit and the bride walking together. The spirit and the bride walking in the business world. The spirit and the bride walking in the educational realm. The spirit and the bride walking in family. The spirit and the bride walking in churches. The spirit and the bride. Are you seeing that now? So your Christianity does not just become to build branches and churches. But that you take over a mountain. Advancing the kingdom. Is the resultant effect of this order and if we do this very well we will be hastening the return of our king let our king be lifted up oh, Sana. hallelujah Aaron for instance please stand up Aaron Aaron is now heading the editing unit of what what newspaper daily trust he's now heading the the look at when did he start because of this kingdom mentality god said this guy will be an ambassador and within a short time god has taken him to joss to now head the editorial unit are you seeing now that's an ambassador right now he's listening to this so if somebody brings any junk in the paper, he will throw it in the trash because he's the editor. Do you think God will lift him? Are you getting my point now? My dear, please come. Oh yeah now. This is a career woman. She likes book very well. Now, God is taking her to great places because she loves education. She has a dream of walking in one of the... Where did you even tell me? One, one. Just tell me one of it. You know all this un and all of this place now that's not wrong do you think if they go and they are discussing how to kill and wipe africans is it not votes they count will she vote it are you getting me so she's doing her own evangelism among the kings there through word of knowledge when one king is sick 
and sickness whips the living daylight out of him she uses her influence to go to his house and say although i'm a un worker i lay hands on you in the name of jesus that's your own church that's your own pulpit if that king arises he's is now born again two votes are there a time will come that's what happened to daniel daniel was part of the parliament in babylon and he single-handedly made the king to confess that nobody should speak against the god of daniel so when they talk about passing gay rights you just say no way for this reason and that reason and because you have the spirit of wisdom god will give you the facts to support it beyond the realm of human beings bless you are you understanding what i'm saying then god will raise some dangerous apostolic businessmen not businessmen that will take the bull by the horn they will behead the bull at once you know what the bull is the bull is the symbol of thomas is a god when you see people saying bull the bull is a god go to the new york stock exchange right in front of it you see the drawing of a bull it's a god that's the god of commerce you don't need to take the bull by the horn behead it let the dragon die and you speak and say it's time to bring in massive kingdom wealth for the kingdom and whilst you bring it in in a month or in a year you are making 60 billion naira and you just calculate 5 billion koinonia 10 billion living faith this one that that's how you are this you are a real kingdom financier no coercing no lying you are doing it as a ministry meanwhile five million for your wife to go to hawaii come on now god punish the devil the bible says see the bible says if you walk on the altar live by the altar hallelujah and you are now thinking two billion naira for evangelism i'm sowing this into capro ministry and you check you see a ministry like god tv saying we need five million we need five million and you say come on lord we are bigger than this you tell your business partners our profit for this month is going to god tv and god gives you intelligence you have such a great returns and you communicate it everybody say kingdom advancement if they have not been teaching you this you have not been in church are you hearing me we will never in advance the kingdom when we are some bunch of whims and broke people waiting for somebody to give twenty thousand, and you sit down they say today we have declared that based on our august mood swing there will not be work in two weeks he's traveling to india to go and consult a god and then the helpless believers just sit down they say they are slashing your salary into half so you will now get ten thousand will you ever think of kingdom advancement with ten thousand say i refuse to be poor say it this is the balanced view of prosperity not just to buy jeeps you will buy it but how many can you enter at a time brothers and sisters you can't cross your leg on two jeeps and say drive it like that you have to see one at a time we are going to rise up and pray the ecclesia say i am the ecclesia i represent the church the agency for transformation for reformation for renewal lift your voice and begin to pray lord i thank you for the revelation of your word we are the ecclesia by the mysteries of the spirit until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our god they will bow one day dagon will bow and the church will again rise as the city upon the hill for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation come on pray in tongues koinonia god is counting on you 
God is counting on you to take that mountain pay the price God is counting on you to take the mountain of education pray I put off the old man there's no time to walk in the flesh I put off the old man there's no time playing church games there's no time to walk in sin the spiritual urgency there is an urgency upon the ecclesia of God we are the envoys for transformation we are the envoys of power we will challenge systems we will challenge the giants hallelujah hallelujah two prayer points and we're out of here prayer point number one you're going to say lord i receive grace to stay and be trained and be equipped to be an effective ambassador lift your voice and pray it's not just about going if you are not equipped you will be frustrated it's not just about going if you are not equipped the giants will destroy you there are giants in this mountain there are giants in this mountain lord i know you are sending me I know you are sending me I know you are sending me Apostolos the envoys of power the envoys of grace we represent the embassy of heaven it has been given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah hallelujah last prayer point now i like you to pray this one like your life depends on it you're going to say lord i'll combine two prayer points in one show me the mountains oh god that you have anointed me to take and grant me the grace to subdue those mountains lift your voice and pray show me oh god show me the mountain oh God I have been anointed like Joshua and Caleb give me the mountain show me show me the mountain I'm tired of walking around purposelessly I am tired of walking around escorting others Lord I've been in Koinonia for a long time show me the mountain I thought kingdom advancement is all about preaching and being a pastor but now I know that there are financial apostles now I know there are education apostles now I know there are media apostles now I know there are family apostles please prophesy pray grant me grace pray now grant me grace grant me grace I will take that mountain for you Lord take me there and I will subdue for you take me to the media I will become the best of quality media and I will do it for you in excellence take me to the business world i will conquer it for you i will conquer it for you i 
and supply finances for kingdom activities make me a pastor make me an apostle make me a prophet and i will cause havoc in the kingdom of darkness i will correct the errors of the father i will set once again the altar of our god pray for your destiny your life depends on it your relevance in the kingdom depends on the role you play hallelujah listen when you find your place you will never be idle one more day in your life you will never hate yourself again all this comparison all this inferiority low self-esteem it dies at once because you know that there is a mountain with your name on it and you will focus on it are you getting me there are some of you you are sent to the education realm all you have is a bsc that's not enough to take the mountain go for your masters if it takes getting another degree again go for it if it takes being a professor go for it so that it will give you influence everybody say influence you need influence to legislate on the kingdom don't let anybody say you are 30 years old who say you cannot school as 30. go and do your masters get the best of the best of the best results and then soar with wings as an eagle you believe god is calling you into the business world business is not all about money sustain a level of intelligence that when you speak with your contemporaries they will know that the spirit of god is at work in your life stretch yourself beyond limit challenge yourself to be the best knowing that this is a symbol of your dedication to the king and his kingdom are you following me now if you're a conference speaker challenge yourself tell yourself you will be the best not just some local champion educate yourself pay the price if god is calling you into the fivefold ministry labor in the word labor in prayer to be an extraordinary man of god that when you enter a place for a meeting rattle the gates of hell don't just go and come out of a city and nobody knows they call the apostles the men that turned the world upside down hallelujah god is calling you to be a healing evangelist be an extraordinary one not a healing evangelist that keeps getting angry at other people because you will not rise up challenge yourself this is a wake-up call for many of us we are the ecclesia god is depending on us so on sunday when you go to church don't just go to church with ritual as usual when you come for koinonia don't just come as usual know that you are not just coming to satisfy the ordinances of a religious movement no koinonia is a platform and attempts to respond to the cry of the spirit that there needs to be a people and if you are not properly trained you will fail when you get there hallelujah father lift your hands everybody let's make a commitment to god right now that the millions have not entered your hand right now that you have not become a celebrity in the media right now that your album is not the best-selling christian album in nigeria yet make a commitment and say lord i declare my allegiance for you go ahead talk to god i lift my hands as a symbol i will not fail you now i know you are depending on me millions of dollars will not take away my allegiance for you i may be a politician but i know where i'm coming from i may be a banker i may be a ceo of the biggest bank in west africa i may speak among unbelievers but i know whose i am 
I'm not confused. I may be a multi-billion dollar businessman traveling around and speaking with presidents but I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Pray. I may be the greatest music artist in the next two years in Nigeria. Give me the song so God and all the shows will not take your place in my life. Pray. Make me that professor. Make me that vice chancellor. I want my paper so God to be of international repute. Take me there and watch what I will do for the kingdom. Make your commitment. You will remember this commitment in the days to come. Make a true commitment unto God. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. God is counting on you. Never forget that. Never forget that. You are part of the people that have come together to lift up his name. If you fail, the apostolic ministry alone will not bring Christ back. Businessmen, if you don't rise up and start supplying su supplies to the kingdom, a day will come witchcraft will be on our pulpit because men are broke. You don't expect the pastor to stop preaching and go around. Are you getting my point? And start begging for money. It will make him teach error. Are you getting my point? Media people, if you do not act the clean films, if you do not come up with movies that can minister to all and sundry, God is counting on us. This is what informs my urgency. That's why you see me on business mode every time. Listen. If you get this revelation, nobody will come to distract you with immorality. Or this, there is a sense of urgency. You have given yourself a limit. In five years' time, I want to become a professor because there is a mountain God wants. That's your target, and you are taking it. Other people say, Are you not resting? Why are you behaving like the world will end? There is an urgency. From tonight, every time you sleep, hear it in your ears. Ecclesia, I'm counting on you. Ecclesia. If because I am tired, I refuse to come for koinonia, to come and teach. Are you seeing the silly reasons people give as to their lack of preparation? I just say, ah, my leg is paining me. If this leg refuses to move, I will leave it at home. The day this leg cannot move, I will carry it and come and sit on a chair. Have you heard that song? I'll do as it beats me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. I'll die at my post. I'd rather die at my post. I'd rather stand on the pulpit. One of my greatest mentors, Kobus van Rensburg, of blessed memory when he died a lot of people were talking of all kinds of junks and i was just looking at people this man was sick cancer had eaten him up he was still praying for people for cancer and he forgot about himself there was a time he was crawling into the church they begged him to stay at home he drove and came and he was crawling crawling into the church a faithful soldier who will die at his post. I'd rather remain poor and be a faithful teacher and stand in this apostolic grace. I'd rather become unpopular. I'd rather never have expansion. But no matter what happens, I've made a decision. I will spend my entire life doing this that I've been called to do. And for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain.
Is that your decision tonight? Hallelujah. Please stand. Hold on. Let me just say two things very quickly and then we'll pray. Please. It's often not my character to do this, but I just felt I had been feeling in my house to do this. I'm inviting everyone to a program I'll be ministering here, right here tomorrow in the evening. I don't know why the meeting of this fellowship, I think it's a fellowship of Christian mass communication students, the diploma arm. They've been fasting and putting a program and the team is glory cloud. I really believe in my heart God is going to do amazing things. You rarely hear me talk about meetings like this. Not because I'm invited. Hallelujah. I know in my spirit. For you it's like the equipping continues. Hallelujah. The time is 5 p.m. Tomorrow, right here, I'll be ministering. I'll be here by myself. Please invite everyone you love. And let's come and labor. I'm going to be teaching on the Holy Spirit. There are certain things that if you pay the price and get now, you will rise forever, never to return. Hallelujah. The venue is right here. And I want you to be part of it. Hallelujah. And then, I know Isaac is not here. One of us is putting an entrepreneurial seminar tomorrow. Hallelujah. I'm also one of the facilitators. I rarely go for any kind of business seminar, at least not among students and all of that. Praise God. And my ministry here in Zaria and all of that is not in the capacity of entrepreneurship at all. But the, the group came and met me and they said they wanted me to speak to the people on entrepreneurship. And I'll not be speaking in the capacity of a man of God. I'll be speaking from an entrepreneurial standpoint. I never get to do this. I think it's in geography. I don't know where the venue is. Look for it. By 9 a.m. tomorrow, many of you who have said, God has said, give me business mountain, entrepreneurial mountain. Try and make sure you invest in your destiny. I know it's free. These are little platforms that you can pay the price. Is there any information on that? Okay. Geography what? AB Theater. Geography AB Theater. Take note of these two meetings. Morning and evening. Invest your morning and evening and do something to your life that will bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, there are people here right now. Our time is fast. It's fast spent. You've never given your heart to the Lord. While you heard me talk about the ecclesia and the kingdom, it suddenly occurred to you that God is depending on you. And you want to make up your mind to say, Lord, I'm tired of my old life. I want to make it right with you. Or you probably have given your life to Christ, but you found yourself derailing for whatever reason. Men may have condemned you, but tonight you want to make a decision. Wherever you are, Please, I'd like you to walk out here. I want to pray for you right now. Inside and outside. Please don't remain at your seat. If the Lord is talking to you, I want you to leave your seat and come out right now. You want to make a decision for Jesus? Don't be ashamed of anybody. If this is your first time, God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I believe there are a few more people. Don't sit back there. We are talking about the ecclesia. Prove your love for Jesus by coming out to say lord enough is enough i'm ready to be the ecclesia i'm ready to make up my mind if there are still people outside god is counting on you win the war in your heart tonight and tell the lord i'm ready to make it right with you hallelujah those of you who have come out i love you and i celebrate you i want you to lift your hands as i lead you to jesus sister come and join them god bless you i'd like you to say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart and I'm ready to be an ambassador for your kingdom tonight I repent of my sins I receive remission and I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare 
that I'm saved. I'm a child of God from today forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus father preserve these ones by your power make them mighty men and women of the spirit use them for your glory may your name alone be lifted in their lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray amen God bless you I'd like you to please follow the ushers the gentleman waving his hands just follow them and they'll have your information hallelujah while I take the announcement if tonight it's your first night worshiping with us here at Koinonia. You are welcome. We love you. God brought you for a reason. Please leave your seat and march out here. You will receive a prayer, a blessing, and a prophecy. God bless you. Please celebrate them as they come. God bless you. This is your first time. Don't sit back there. Wherever you are, inside and outside, God bless you. We welcome you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Celebrate them. Koinonia, they are coming. hallelujah thank you so much for coming we love you we thank you so much this is koinonia i assure you that the word you are receiving will build you it will empower you and it will make you a sign and a wonder in the name of jesus christ we have a prayer and a blessing for you we are anointed people we are ambassadors and when we bless you you are blessed stretch forth your hands people of god and bless them in the name of Jesus, we command the blessing of the Lord upon you. You are empowered by the Spirit. That the revelation you have heard today will make you mighty. In the name of Jesus, may you be mighty men and women of the Spirit. We bless you with a hunger for spiritual things. We pray that you are empowered. You will walk in dominion by the Spirit of God. You are granted access to the mysteries of the kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for coming. We are here every Friday. Next Friday is our miracle service and we invite you to experience the wonder working power of the Spirit. May God bless you. Please follow the ushers too. They will have your details. We celebrate you. We love you and we honor you. Koinonia, celebrate them please. Hello beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching